Well, good morning. It's a beautiful Sunday here out in the backyard. Stella's here. If you hear some grinding noises, she's on the second day of a good bone, so I apologize for that. Um, do you happen to know you went to Paris, I asked her, on our first evening walk on the beach together? And before Kay could say anything, I started singing it to her as we strolled long holding hands. And that was the beginning. Little did we know this pirate troubadour slash jester would serenade us as we moved through our lives. The last few days, I've been thinking about Jimmy Buffett, his stories and images, and a funny thing happened. Um, his words started coming to me um, randomly in bits and pieces. And so quickly I had to brush them away from my face at first. Then I started writing them down furiously and um, this little story came out of it. His music has accompanied us while floating in the Atlantic, the Gulf and the intercoastal waterways through celebrations, road trips, trials and tribulations, and even a wake or two. We've been blessed by so many great voices in our lives, and we don't spend a whole lot of time ranking or rating them, but Jimmy holds a special place. Kay and I both were Florida born and bred now, as were our kids, and he provides a saltwater soundtrack, if you would. Blue skies and ultraviolet rays. And he broadened my cultural horizons. He taught me about the magic, mystery, and mischief in everyday life, and the spirituality and natural beauty, and the liberation in laughter. His lessons on the art of noticing our surroundings pick up where Hemingway and Alice Walker left off. For half a century, Buffett's music has served as a visceral reminder to live in the world, as Muir said not just on it. And with his words, he takes us with him wherever he goes, from that night in Montana with no room for doubt, to the corner of walk and don't walk, just sipping coffee from Cafe Du Monde. A journey past the Channel Islands, out into the cosmos, singing Mother, Mother Ocean from a hymn he taught at an early age. Now I've heard, and maybe you have too, that Buffett's work is described as a, an escape, but it's not an escape exactly. It, um, it gives our spirits lift when we are too much burdened by troubles and worries and obligations, challenging us to try to live happily ever after, every now and then. There is a lightness to even his deepest work Follow in my wake, he says, and so we do. I buzzed the Himalayas and barrel rolled above Hong Kong. I followed my song lines past bamboo shacks and shops. I'm going back to Cartagena and Havana and, of course, the Keys. I found love in the library where the girls standing in fiction stretch high on bare feet learned bits of Tahitian, Portuguese, and French, hopped a freighter, skidded the ocean, and left England without sound. I saw my own barefoot children in the rain, then watched my grandkids search for hermit crabs along the shore of a spoils island. I once bought my daughter a steel drum, and she played it. I made a sizable withdrawal from the bank of bad habits but soon discovered that moderation was in fact the key, a valuable lesson spun from barometer soup. In Buffett, this underrated Floridian found a love for Mark Twain, Pat Conroy, Bruce Chatwin, Carl Hyacin, and Jim Harrison. They're all links of chain for me. Stories of my favorite books, Jimmy says, 
still take on many different looks and I'm gone again home again I sat upon my porch of indecision reading swapping semi true stories with my friends I grew older but not up I fell down the bleachers of Alligator Alley during a Jimmy concert by the way that's a whole true story and I've gone incommunicado I filled a tin cup chalice with good red wine. I did say manana, but didn't mean it, and spent a ragtop days in my trusty Jeep and rusty Bronco. I asked for some palm trees and tales from the South Seas. Sparks flew around my head, and I smelled the fragrance on the pillowcase and thought about the girl. Heard the sound of a whistle blows in Congo town. Mail boats in. Mail boats in. Jimmy played here in Melbourne, you know. Yep. In a little field right over there near Florida Tech with just his six string and fingers Taylor playing that harmonica. That was a good day. Uh, my son and I caught a few big fish with that knee deep song playing on the boat. You know, the one he did with Zach Brown. Yes, I'm a cultural infidel <laughs> who has made many a coastal confession. Living on things that excite me, be they pastry or lobster or love. And I closed my eyes and saw Marilyn Monroe and beautiful swimmer. I bet you did too. My son and daughter know nearly every word of every song. They plowed the sea with me and smoothed the troubled waters in a simple, sturdy craft we call the Makeritaville. Shells sink, dreams float, life's good on our boat. False echoes soothed me somehow in the days after losing my dad, and I remember driving back with Kay from Gainesville on a Sunday afternoon after visiting her mom in the hospital. She just stared straight ahead and said nothing, and I was smart enough not to offer any words of wisdom. After a long while, I turned on the stereo, and Fruitcake came on unexpectedly, and as I went to turn it off, I saw that there was a hint of smile uh, on her face to go with all those tears. There again, that unfathomable lightness I let it play. Now, I have a belly full of rice and beans and an ear full of Patsy Klein, and I'm still quietly, quietly making noise. I shook the hand of the mango man as he greets me at the border. I gaze upward each 4th of July and remember the night I painted the sky, waiting for Christmas winds to blow all my worries away. Now I can see the day when my hair is stone gray and both of us finally disappear, but not yet. There's still so much to be done, Jimmy. We have some more happily ever aftering to do. Well, fins up, parrot heads. Fair winds. <laughs>